Out there, lost in the crushing blackness between the stars, a world drifts. It's called K218b, a name as cold as the void. It circles a dim ember of a sun over 100 light years away. What James Webb found is a whisper that could become a roar, a hint so potent, so tied to life as we know it, that it forces us to ask, are we hearing the first faint heartbeat of an alien world? How far is K218b? It's not like going to the moon or even Mars. This planet is 124 light years away. A light year is the distance light travels in one whole year, and light is the fastest thing anywhere. So the light from K218b star takes 124 years just to reach us. If you tried to count the miles, it would be about 700 million million miles. That's a seven with 14 zeros after it. It's so far, it's hard to even imagine. Our whole solar system is like one tiny sandbox compared to the giant beach of space between us and K218b. It seemed impossible, but scientists had a secret way to detect it. How did we even find something so far away and hidden? We didn't see the planet itself. In 2015, a space telescope named Kepler stared at lots of stars for a long time. It watched for tiny winks, moments when a star's light dimmed just a little bit. When a planet crosses in front of its star, it blocks a tiny bit of light, like a mini eclipse. Kepler saw the star K218 wink over and over again in a pattern. That pattern told scientists that something big was circling the star out there in the dark. That something was K218b. Finding planets this way by watching for the dip in starlight is called the transit method. It's how we've found thousands of planets outside our solar system, showing us the galaxy is full of worlds. So we found a planet, but what kind of weird world was it? K218b wasn't like Earth at all. When scientists figured out its size, they were surprised. It's huge. It weighs more than eight times as much as Earth. And it's more than two and a half times wider. Imagine Earth puffing up like a giant balloon. That size makes K218 be a sub-Neptune. That means it's bigger than rocky planets like Earth or Mars, but smaller than the giant ice planets in our outer solar system, like Neptune or Uranus. Here's a funny thing. Planets this size seem to be everywhere in the galaxy. Maybe they're even the most common kind. But in our own solar system, we don't have any sub-Neptunes. We have small rocky planets and huge gas planets, but nothing in the middle. That makes these sub-Neptunes big mysteries. What are they made of? Are they giant rocks with super thick air? Are they planets that tried to be gas giants like Jupiter, but didn't get big enough? Or are they something totally different? like worlds made mostly of water. Figuring out sub-Neptunes is a big job for planet scientists, and K218b became a star player in this puzzle. What made K218b extra special wasn't just its weird size, it was also where it lives. It orbits its star, K218, right in the habitable zone. That doesn't mean it has life, but it's like the Goldilocks zone, not too hot not too cold. It's the area around a star where the temperature might be just right for liquid water to exist on a planet's surface if it has the right kind of air. And water is super important for life as we know it. A giant, weird planet in the maybe just right zone. That got scientists really excited. But could a planet orbiting a dim red star really be friendly to life? Just because K218b is in the habitable zone doesn't mean it's a nice place to live. Its star, K218, is a red dwarf. These stars are smaller, cooler, and much dimmer than our sun. They are the most common stars in the galaxy, though. To stay warm enough for possible water, K218b has to orbit really close to its star. It zooms around K218 in only 33 days, our Earth takes 365 days to go around our Sun. Being so close causes problems. Planets near red dwarfs might get tidally locked. That means one side always faces the star, 
always daytime, and the other side always faces away, always nighttime. Imagine one side of the planet being super hot and the other side being freezing cold. That could make it hard for life. Also, red dwarf stars can be grumpy. They sometimes shoot out huge bursts of energy called flares. These flares could blast K218b with dangerous rays, maybe stripping away its air over time. Is K218 a quiet star or a stormy one? We're still figuring that out. And what about the planet itself? It's so heavy, the pull of gravity there must be super strong. What's deep inside? Could the crushing pressure turn water into weird kinds of solid ice, even if it's warm? Does it even have a solid surface to stand on? Maybe it's more like Neptune, just a giant ball of gas that gets thicker and thicker towards the middle. Its huge size makes everything complicated. We don't really know what the insides of sub-Neptunes are like. The biggest question of all was about its air. What kind of gases does K218b breathe? Is it thick air, mostly light gases like hydrogen, or is it different? The air holds the clues. It controls the temperature, protects the planet, and might contain signs of life. Finding out what's in K218b's air was the perfect job for the most amazing space telescope ever built. So how could a telescope possibly smell the air of a planet trillions of miles away? Meet the James Webb Space Telescope, or JWST. Launched in 2021, Webb is like a giant eye in space, way farther from Earth than the Moon. Its huge mirror, made of gold-covered hexagons, collects light from super far away. It's especially good at seeing infrared light, which is like heat radiation that our eyes can't see. This is perfect for studying cool stars and the air around exoplanets. Webb doesn't take a picture of K218b showing oceans or land. The planet is still just a tiny dot of light. Instead, Webb uses a clever trick called spectroscopy. When K218b passes in front of its star, a transit, some of the starlight shines through the very top layers of the planet's air. The gases in the air grab certain colors or wavelengths of that starlight. Think of it like colors missing from a rainbow. Different gases grab different specific colors, leaving behind a pattern like a secret barcode. Webb has special tools that spread the starlight out into a full rainbow of infrared colors. Then they carefully measure which colors are missing or dimmer because the planet's air trapped them. By reading this barcode, Scientists can figure out what gases are in the air, and maybe even how much there is. It's super hard work. The light from the air is tiny compared to the star's bright light. Scientists have to carefully remove the star's light from the signal to see the planet's barcode. If they make a tiny mistake, or if the telescope wobbles, or if the star itself does something funny, like having dark spots, it could mess up the results. It's like trying to hear a tiny whisper in the middle of a rock concert. But if they get it right, they can decode the air of worlds light years away. Webb started hunting for K218b's secrets. What did Webb find hiding in that alien air? In 2023, the first big news came out. A team of scientists led by Professor Niku Madhusudan used Webb to look at K218b's air, and they found stuff. Webb clearly saw the barcodes for carbon dioxide, CO2, and methane, CH4. Finding these was a big deal. Carbon is the main building block for life on Earth. Finding gases with carbon in them on a planet in the habitable zone was super exciting. It showed Webb could do this amazing detective work so far away. But Webb also noticed something was missing. It didn't find much ammonia, NH3. Scientists expected to find more ammonia in the kind of thick, hydrogen-filled air they thought K218b might have. Why was it gone? The team had an interesting idea. Maybe the ammonia was reacting with something below the air. Maybe an ocean of liquid water. Some kinds of chemistry with water could use up the ammonia gas. This missing ammonia made an older idea seem more possible. Could K218b be a Hycean, Chycean world? That's a made-up word, mixing hydrogen and ocean. It's an idea for a planet totally covered in a very deep, 
warm water ocean with a thick sky made mostly of hydrogen gas above it. Imagine a giant water world, way bigger than Earth, but with different air. Could life swim in that ocean? The methane and CO2, plus the missing ammonia, seem to fit this picture of a watery world. K218b started to sound less like a boring gas ball, and maybe more like a place life could exist. But wait, there was one more tiny thing in Webb's first look, something almost too faint to see right at the edge of Webb's hearing. A tiny hint of a gas called dimethyl sulfide, DMS. Back then, scientists said, hmm, maybe, but we're not sure. It was too weak to get excited about. The big story was the carbon and the possible ocean, but DMs, that's a weird one. On Earth, DMs is mostly made by tiny living things in the ocean, like plankton. It's part of what makes the seaside smell like the seaside. Finding even a tiny whiff of it on another planet, especially one that might have an ocean. Wow, that makes scientists really curious. Was the signal real or just a mistake in the data? like static on the radio. They knew they had to look again, maybe with a different part of Webb, to see if this smelly ghost would show up again. Could this strange gas be the clue they were searching for? The scientists got another chance to use Webb. This time, they used a different tool called MIRI, mid-infrared instrument. MIRI sees different kinds of infrared light than the first tools Webb used. It's like switching from looking with your eyes to looking with special heat vision goggles. If the DMS signal was just a mistake made by the first tools, Mirai probably wouldn't see it. But if DMS was really floating in K218B's air, Mirai should be able to spot its barcode too, maybe even better. Using a different tool is a great way to double check. So, they pointed Mirai at K218B when it crossed its star. They collected the light, did the careful work to read the barcode, and the signal was there again. The team reported that this time, the signal matching DMs looked strong and clear. It could also be a close cousin of DMs called DMDS, or maybe both. They look very similar to Miri right now. But here's the important part. On Earth, both of these smelly sulfur gases are mostly made by living things. Finding a stronger sign of them with a second tool made the discovery much more believable. It was like hearing that strange whisper on two different phones. It makes you think someone might actually be talking. This news caused a big buzz. Some people called it the strongest sign of alien life yet. Professor Madhusudhan said it could be a huge moment. Did they finally find a world with life? The whole story seemed to fit together for his team. Methane, CO2, missing ammonia, and now maybe DMs. It all pointed to their idea of a high sea and ocean world, maybe full of tiny swimming life, making smelly gases, just like Earth's plankton. But hang on, science needs proof, not just exciting ideas. Is this really a sign of alien life? Finding aliens would be the biggest news ever. So scientists have to be super, super careful even though the DM signal looks stronger, there are still big reasons to wait before shouting, Aliens! First, how sure are they? The signal is still only at the Three Sigma level. That's a science way of saying how sure they are. Three Sigma means there's still a small chance, about one time out of 370, that the signal is just random luck, like static on the telescope, looking like a real signal by accident. That sounds small, but for huge news like finding life, scientists want to be much, much surer. They want five sigma proof. That means the chance of being wrong is tiny, less than one in a million. The DM signal isn't that strong yet. Big question hash one. Is the signal even real or just lucky static? They need more proof. Second, even if the DMs is real, does it have to be life? We know life makes DMs here on Earth. But K218b is totally different. It's huge, maybe has crazy high pressure deep down, has different air, and circles a different kind of star. Could there be some weird chemistry happening there, maybe deep in its ocean, if it has one? 
or high in its air, zapped by the star's rays that makes DMs without any life at all. Scientists have thought about known ways this could happen, and they don't think those ways make enough DMs. But what about ways we don't know about yet? We shouldn't assume alien planets work just like Earth. Big question hash too. Could some strange non-life chemistry be making this gas? Third, the amount of DMs they might be seeing is weird. The signal suggests there might be thousands of times more DMs in K218b's air than in Earth's air. If it is life, those alien microbes must be working incredibly hard, making way more DMs than all life on Earth. Professor Madhusudan thinks maybe this is normal for Hycean planets, but it's still strange. Does finding so much make life more likely? Or does it maybe point to some powerful non-life source that we haven't thought of? It's a real head-scratcher. Big question hash three. Why is there maybe so much of this gas? Is it life working over time or something else entirely? What exactly are scientists looking for when they talk about signs of life? This whole search is about finding biosignatures. That's just a science word for a sign of life, something that likely wouldn't be there unless living things were making it. DMs is a good possible biosignature because life makes almost all of it here. But finding one is tricky. We have to be careful about false alarms. For example, oxygen is something life makes here. But scientists know that some planets without life might end up with oxygen in their air through other processes. So just finding oxygen wouldn't be proof of life by itself. That's why scientists hope to find more than one clue. Maybe they could find a mix of gases in the air that shouldn't exist together for a long time unless life is constantly making them. It's like keeping a bathtub full even though the drain is open. Something has to keep pouring water in. Finding a weird mix of gases that are out of balance could be a stronger sign of life than just one gas like DMs. Right now on K218b we have methane and CO2. Interesting, they have carbon needed for life. They fit with the ocean idea, but not proof of life. Missing ammonia also fits the ocean idea, which is cool, but still not direct proof of life. Maybe DMS, DMDS. This is the most exciting clue. If it's real, and if non-life chemistry can't make it there, it could be huge. But those are big ifs right now. Is this enough to say we found aliens? Nope, not yet. It's the most interesting hint we've gotten so far from a planet that might be friendly to life. But it's like finding one footprint in the sand. Maybe it means something amazing, or maybe the wind just blew the sand in a funny shape. We need more footprints, or maybe a video. While the idea of a living Hycean ocean world is exciting, not all scientists agree that's what K218b is. Science works by people having different ideas and testing them. Other scientists have looked at the web data and run computer simulations, and they've come up with different pictures of K218b. Web saw a fuzzy hint from K218b, a maybe life signal hanging in space. But if life is there, are we ready for what that means? Tell us what you think and like and subscribe for more.